four, so we know what that means. Section eight it means pre-cal party is coming soon. I want you to think back to your sophomore year when you took geometry. And you learn things called the angle of elevation. If I am standing somewhere and I look up from the horizontal, that is called an angle of elevation. It's always measured from the horizontal. And the angle of depression. If I'm standing on the high thing and I am looking down from the horizontal, that is called the angle of depression. So those terms hopefully make complete sense. And we are really going to be doing geometry level of trig right now on this problem. The angle of depression of a buoy from the top of the Barnegat Bay Lighthouse, 130 feet above the surface of the water. So there we are. Our lighthouse is 130 feet up. The angle of depression happens to be 6 degrees. They've drawn it here. Find the distance x from the base of the lighthouse to the buoy. So we want to know what is that? Well, the six degrees is right up here, but the lovely right triangle that makes sense for this, I need that six degrees somewhere in my triangle. Where would it be? Where that theta is. These are called alternate interior angles. You remembered some geometry. These would be parallel lines. They're both horizontal lines. So that six and this six down here alternate interior. Ah, well, let's set it up. Which trig function, sine, cosine, or tangent would I want to use? Tangent. Tangent. Because we know the tangent of an angle, which happens to be six, is the opposite, 130, over the adjacent, which is our x. So if I multiply by x and then divide it by my tangent, see if you can't tell me the answer how far away that buoy is. switch to degrees. We usually when we're dealing with trig functions, we're dealing with um, radians. 1,236. Anybody else with that? 1,237. Was this in feet? Feet. So don't forget on applications, often they are measured in degrees, so we have to have a calculator in the right mode. From the top of the 100-foot-tall Allgill Hall, a man observes a car moving toward the building. The angle of depression of the car changes from 22 degrees when the car is a long ways away, and then the car is getting closer to 46 degrees. How far does the car travel during this time period? So here are some of the things we know. We know how tall the building is. It is 100 feet tall. First, it was 22 degrees, and then it got to 46 degrees degrees. And the question is, how far did the car go? So the x is going to represent that. Now over here, there's an unknown distance as well. We'll use a new formula for that. I have two right triangles, and they have already done the alternate interior. 22 makes this 22 down in here, and the 46 makes the 46 down in here. So they've already gone to these right triangles that I have. Let me start with the small right triangle with the 46 degrees right over here. I can set up a ratio that I know, solving for D, I know that the tangent of that 46 would be 100 over D, opposite over adjacent. So I can solve this for D and know that D equals you don't get. Yeah, 100 divided by tangent of 46. So, well, I could solve for that D. What is that D? Ninety-seven. Let's go to two decimal places on this one. Ninety-six point five seven feet. So now I can use that and start working with the big right triangle that includes that 22 degree angle. And we can say, all right, the tangent of that 22 is going to equal the opposite 100 over what? 
X plus the 96.57. Yeah, easy enough. So I'm going to take the same idea. I'm going to multiply by that denominator. So I have X plus 96.57 would equal 100 divided by the tangent of 22. And then we could just subtract our 96. And how far did that car travel? see how we can draw some right triangles to help us figure out this question. So let's try another one that kind of looks similar to that. A large helium-filled helium penguin is moored, tied down. There's the penguin. At the beginning of a parade route, awaiting the start of the parade, two cables attached to the underside of the penguin make angles of 48 degrees at 40 degrees. So these on the left are the two cables that are coming down over here. There's one cable. Here's my second cable. Uh, they're in the same plane as a perpendicular line from the penguin to the ground. So not, not at two different spots. They're just a line with each other. If the cables are attached to the ground 10 feet apart, how high above the ground is that penguin? In other words, the wind must be blowing like this. So it's blowing that penguin over in that direction. They want to know how high it is. Again, they've made some right triangles. We're trying to find the H. We don't know the X here, either in that triangle. So if I just started writing out some equations, I'm going to start with that 48 one, the smaller triangle. Tangent of 48 equals what? H over X. Now, unfortunately, there are two unknowns. Can't do much with that yet. Let's try the 40. Tangent of 40 would equal what? H over 10 plus X, or X plus 10. There you go. So any suggestions? Think about your math knowledge. Any suggestions? What? <laughs> solve for a variable. Solve for a variable. I could solve them both for H. I heard somebody comment. So let's multiply by X. X times the tangent of 48. And over here, H would equal parentheses X plus 10 times the tangent of 40. Well, then what I'm doing is substituting, really, setting them equal to each other. I'm substituting. I know that x times the tangent of 48 would have to equal x plus 10 times the tangent of 40. And there's only one variable now in this one I should be able to solve. So I need to distribute there. x tangent of 40a would equal x times the tangent of 40 plus 10 times the tangent of 40. What would we do now? Trying to solve for x. Let's get the x terms on the same side. Let's subtract this x tangent of 40. x tangent of 40a minus x tangent of 40 would equal 10 times the tangent of 40. Any suggestions on what I can do now? Trying to solve for x. Factor out the x. There's the key. When I get the x terms together, nothing else on the one side other than the x terms, then we can factor out our x. And that allows us to solve for x by doing what now? Dividing by that big set of parentheses. x is going to equal. I'll let you start working for me on your calculators. that's not what we wanted to know, but I bet we could solve for what we wanted to know. We want to know the height. X, 30.90, times tangent of 48. How much? There we go. We know how high the penguin is, and our life is complete. 
it is 32, 34.32 feet above. Again, draw right triangles. This one happened to have two unknowns in it, and we had to substitute one and two the other. No problem. All this section is about applications dealing with trade. U.S. Coast Guard Patrol boat leaves Port Cleveland. This is going to be Port Cleveland right here. PC, Port Cleveland. Averaging 35 knots. What does that word mean, knots? Nautical miles per hour. It's a speed. Nautical miles per hour. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it says it right here. Did you notice that? <laughs> no, I didn't even notice that. Traveling for two hours on a course of 53 degrees. When we are talking about navigation, where do we measure our angles from? It's different than in math, where we measure the angle from the positive right, x-axis. What right from the left? Right from the and we call that north. We right. measure it from north. And a positive angle goes which way? Clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. Clockwise for navigation. So we need to move from north clockwise 53 degrees, and that is the direction of travel for this lovely boat. Now, how far has that boat gone? That's the amount of time. What distance? That's a word that I'd like to That's a miles per hour, right? Does that mean miles per hour? The teacher just asked what knots they for. Not for miles per hour. Okay. Oh, so they went 60 miles per hour. What? 70. 70. 70. Wow. Good thing we're a pre out. 35 <laughs> times 2. This was hard. 35 times 2. We're going 35 nautical miles an hour for two hours. We have traveled a distance of 70 nautical miles. So 70 is how far that boat has gone. Whew. We made it through that. Then three hours on a course of 143 degrees. So at the end of that, we are starting another direction. So I'm just going to put another little coordinate system right at the end there. Whoops, I thought I was putting it right at the end there. And 143 degrees from north. What quadrant would 143 degrees in navigation from north? Be the fourth quadrant. 143 degrees, we've come around, there's 143 degrees, and this is the direction we are now going. How far have we gone this time? 105, where'd you get 105 from? 35 times 3, we did it for 3 hours. Whew. Okay, that one wasn't quite as painful. 105. What is the boat's bearing and distance from Fort Cleveland? So, from the original place, this almost sounds like a physics question. From the original, this was the original right there, what is the bearing and distance? The bearing is going to be that green angle, and then what distance have we got? Well, we have a triangle. Let's see if we can figure out what kind of triangle we have. We're going to keep using these alternate interior angles. If the 53 over here originally, that is an alternate interior with it. So it's also 53. Because due north and south, those are both vertical. So they're parallel to each other. So this is 53. Can you figure out for me the measure of that angle right there? 37. Where'd you get 37 from? Yeah. 180 is a straight line, minus that 43, I have 37 left over. So I want you to tell me the measure of this total angle between these two red lines. The boat turned through what angle? 90. 90. How convenient. They made a nice right triangle up here. They made it too easy for us. 
So if I have a right triangle there, can you tell me the easiest way to find the distance? Pythagorean theorem. So let's figure out the distance that boat actually went. It would be the square root of 70 squared plus 105 squared. So how many nautical miles? Exactly 0.2? Uh, one nine. Yep. All right. Nautical miles. Well, there's the distance. They also want the bearing. Think about it. How can I get that bearing? It's going to be that green. Inverse. Okay. Let's use inverse tangent. Inverse tangent of what? We have a right triangle. So this angle is going to be the inverse tangent of the opposite over the adjacent, 105 over 70. Well, it's not really the green angle. But that, that, will, that will give me this thing. But that's okay. Let's do that. It might help us. In fact, it will help us. What do you get for that? I got 0.3. 0.3, exactly. Let's go to 2 if it's not. 0.3. Okay. So that's 56.31. And we're trying to get a bearing, which is from due north over there. Oh, you said you had that number. And that is the basic three and subtract 90. Okay, I'm going to take it in maybe slightly different steps. I could get this angle right here. If you take 90 minus 53, I would have this angle right here, right? So what would that angle be? 37. 37? Yeah. So that means I could find this angle down here, right? That tiny one? Yeah. Yeah, 56.31 minus 37. 19.31? Okay. So now what could I do to get my complete bearing from north? Ninety plus nineteen point three one, that little piece. Why can't we just keep this? Why couldn't we have just done 53 plus 56.31? That's a real good question. Because, <laughs> you know, the teachers just want to make it hard sometimes. 53 plus 56.31 is how much? 109.31. Wow. 109.31 degrees. There is our bear, and there's our distance. Okay, we struggled through that one. Simple harmonic motion. Simple harmonic motion is going to be motion that, first of all, repeats itself. And the second thing, when we get to physics, we'll study this as well, it's linear. It goes in a straight line path. So something that goes around in a circle repeats itself as well. It's periodic, but it's not simple harmonic motion. But something that repeats itself in a straight line is simple harmonic motion. A point moving on a number line, there's a straight line, is in simple harmonic motion if its directed distance d from the origin is given either by d equals a sine omega t, that w looking thing here is omega, or d equals a cosine omega t. It could be the sine or a cosine. Where a is the amplitude, and omega, well, it's like our B value that we used earlier. It's in the same position as that B value. But omega happens to stand for its angular speed. It's called radians per second, how quickly we're turning through an angle. And the frequency of something, which when we get to physics, we'll measure it in hertz, how many cycles per second, the frequency of something is given by this equation here. It's just like that equation, or it's just, we learned earlier that the frequency and reciprocal, <laughs> see if I can get it out, that the frequency and period were reciprocals of each other, 
And do you remember the period formula that we learned for sine and cosine? 2 pi over absolute b. So if I just turn it over, b over 2 pi, well, omega over 2 pi. That's the frequency. So these really are things that we've covered before. They're just introducing a new variable, omega. It's, it's angular speed is what it happens to be. So here they have this piston. And this piston is connected to a camshaft that they don't show. And that camshaft turns, and so that piston then is going to be moving as that camshaft turns. It's connected to a spot that makes it go, if you think of a, if you think of a circle here, if I was connected to this, it would pull me one way, and then it pushes me back. You get the idea. I would go like this, in and out, as that turn. So that's what makes a piston go in and out. And they are saying in the diagram that the initial position of the piston is all the way over to one side at maximum amplitude right here. And then there's a zero position, and then it goes to minimum. So zero is right in the middle. And its initial position is when that piston is all the way open, they are saying. So it's big space. In a mechanical linkage, like the one shown in figure 4.94, a wheel with an 8 centimeter radius turns with an angular velocity of 8 pi radians per second. Angular velocity, so that is the omega. Question number A, what is the frequency of that piston? Well, they said frequency up here was omega divided by 2 pi. This reciprocal of the piston. So if we did omega divided by 2 pi, oh, sorry, frequency equals omega divided by 2 pi, and omega is 8 pi, what do you get for the answer? Four. Four cycles per second is what it is. Four cycles per second, or oscillations per second. It's called hertz. We'll do a physics class with all the hertz. Four cycles per second. B. What is the distance from the starting position, where t equals zero, exactly 3.45 seconds after this is starting? So we're going to have to come up with an equation that matches this scenario. So either a sine function or a cosine function. Now they're saying their initial position is at the maximum height. And then I would start moving towards zero. Cosine fits that. Time zero. Cosine is at its maximum position, and then it starts moving towards zero. So let's see if we can set up the cosine one. So I know my distance is going to be A cosine omega t. I'm going to put parentheses around it because we're really taking the cosine of both of those things. Well, we just figured out, or we're told what omega was. It was 8 pi. Cosine 8 pi times t. You know, put a parentheses, otherwise you forget that we're taking the cosine of the whole thing. What is our a value in this picture? Go below. I don't know. They tell us all the information. It's a. I don't know. No, no. What is it? Amplitude starts at the next position zero. A is the amplitude. They tell us the initial position is when time is zero. But look at that information they gave us, and can you tell me what the amplitude would be at this time? Well, here's the, they gave us one sentence. See if you can read that and figure out what the amplitude would be. It's going to be 8. Because when the wheel is in this position, I'm connected there. This is eight centimeters, and when this moves around, now this is this has a, a hinge, if you will, there, a linkage there, so it can bend up as it's going. As it comes this direction, I would lose eight centimeters when I'm in the middle, right there. I've lost eight centimeters, and then when it comes all the way down to this position, it's another eight centimeters the other side. So our amplitude is eight, eight centimeters. Eight. So they want to know the distance from the starting position, time equals zero, exactly 3.45 seconds. Well, why don't you put 3.45 right over there? Tell me what you get. Now, don't forget about your mode. What mode do you need to be in? Fire radians. 
radians. Eight pi radians. You need to switch your calculator back to your just in degrees. What answer do you get there? Point four seven. Wait, so that's how we use pi with a number, it's considered a radian, or is it just like No, it's pi is just a number. Okay. But they explained in this that we were moving at so many radians per second. Okay. So we're in radians. Anybody else? Two point four seven? Let me double check and see if that's the right answer. That is the distance we have traveled. But they ask us a question slightly different than the distance traveled. Or is it? What is the distance from the starting position? Okay. Sorry, this isn't the distance traveled. This is the position we are going to be at. 2.47 centimeters. That's from zero. In other words, I am from zero at the position 2.47 centimeters. How far have we traveled? How would I get that answer? Eight minus, minus 2.47. So this equation is going to give me the location at any point in time. So to know how far I traveled, eight minus 2.47, what do you get? Exactly 5.5%. Last one. Let's look at another scenario, see if we could set up an equation. A mass oscillating up and down, up and down on the bottom of a spring. Hey, we've seen that in physics class. Assuming perfect elasticity and no friction or air resistance, we have those, can be modeled as harmonic motion. If the weight is displaced a maximum of five centimeters, so there you go, it goes down five, it also comes up five, Find the modeling equation if it takes two seconds to complete one cycle. So two seconds per cycle, that's called the frequency. Uh, just a minute. No. Frequency, radians per cycles per second. <laughs> that's frequency. This is the period that they just gave us. The period is two seconds for one cycle. Two seconds for one cycle. Period is how long it takes for something to happen. Two seconds. All right. So they want us to come up with the modeling equation. Well, first I want to know what is going to fit in this picture, a sine or a cosine? This one's starting at zero, then it's doing what? It's a sine if it starts at zero. It's a sine. This one is going down five and then coming back up. So what kind of sign would it be? Not an inverse. Oh. That's one way I could do it. Sign normally looks like this. We have something that is doing exactly the opposite of that. It's heading down first. What do I do to an equation? Oh, negative. It's negative. Just a negative. <laughs> negative in front of it. I just reflected it across the x-axis. I just turned it upside down. All I did was turn it upside down. We can have a negative sine function. So their diagram, and the book does it a little different, but their diagram shows us a negative sine function. Negative a sine omega, ooh, too many dots there, omega t. And remember, omega is... I didn't say omega was. We know, let me come back over here. We know that the frequency is omega divided by 2 pi. I know the frequency equals omega divided by 2 pi. All right, so we're just trying to fill this thing in. Well, how about the A? What's the A? A. Number. Let's go with 5. Yeah. This one has an amplitude of 5. y equals negative 5 sine. Now I need to try to figure out what this omega is. 
What was the relationship between period and frequency again? It's reciprocals of each other. Reciprocals of each other. So the frequency, if the period is two seconds per one cycle, what would the frequency be? One over two. One cycle per two seconds. One half cycle per second. So I know this thing equals one half. Omega divided by two pi must equal one half. So I can solve for that omega. I'm going to cross multiply. Two times omega equals two pi times one, which is just two pi. So you can divide by two. What is omega? Pi. There would be the equation. And they don't even ask us any interesting questions about it. But there it would be. Negative five sine pi times t. And that would show how that spring is oscillating up and down. There are the problems. I'm going to enter this cool formula that we just had so we can watch it go. Period in review. There goes that spring going up and down, up and down, up and down. Does that mean the next class period we have a test after that? That means the period after that we have a test. Correct. <laughs>